Hi, right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'm going to be discussing Boris Johnson's attempts to shift attention away from the economic damage of Brexit and the political damage of the various corruption scandals and onto more aspirational targets that his government will yet again fail to achieve. This time it's his objective of reaching an export target of £1 trillion worth a year. Uh, not at all put off by the huge trade barriers he has just erected. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, let's first of all take a look at this objective from the government's point of view before picking a few rather large holes in the plan. We're about to head into the International Trade and Prosperity Week, apparently, and Boris Johnson wants to set out his post-Brexit vision for trade. Fair enough. Absolutely, we should have a trade policy. That'd be nice. Johnson, along with other Brexiteers, promised that leaving the EU would provide opportunities to boost our trade beyond that which was possible as members of the EU. There is to be a new campaign with the somewhat questionable slogan, Made in UK, Sold to the World. Now here's where I have to point out my first concern. See, I was discussing on the Patreon live stream at the weekend how the government have actively pulled the rug from under the feet of British produce. You know, and it seems to be deliberate. You know, when some aspect of British production, whether farming, manufacturer, whatever, struggles, there's always this debate about to what extent the government should get involved to rescue it or prop it up. But the Conservatives, going right back to the days of Thatcher, have had a policy of running British manufacture down. As their most influential economic advisor, Sir Patrick Minford, has put it himself. And we've seen this during the 80s Conservative government, as well as the more recent one from 2010. Even under Boris Johnson, he doesn't get to say, oh yeah, but they got it wrong. Even under him and his post-Brexit Britain, what has he done? He's worked on trade deals that will allow, for example, farmers from thousands of miles away to undercut our own farmed produce in our own market. On that point, do you want me to tell you what the plan is supposed to be? This is what it's supposed to be. This is what Brexit supporters say the plan is. Oh yeah, British farmers won't be able to sell their goods easily in the UK market because they'll be priced out by Australia, New Zealand and in time the United States. But here's what they can do, you see. They can sell their goods to the luxury markets overseas. So the plan is to sell to other markets thousands of miles away, which will increase the value even more and reduce the quality also, because after all, how long does it stay fresh without being frozen? I'm not really sure frozen meat is really what the luxury market is after. But whether feasible or not, I'm not an expert. That's the plan. Poor quality produce for the British market and a push to get British producers of higher quality food to sell their stuff abroad. Preferably to Pacific nations for some reason. Oh yeah, I remember. Because Johnson wants us to join the CPTPP, the uh, Pacific Trading Bloc. Because that makes sense. And I've spoken at various times about how even if this policy were feasible... It represents a huge increase in our carbon footprint. Our government's trade policy is for us to sell produce thousands of miles away instead of, not in addition to, instead of a few hundred miles away. The ecological and financial costs will make that produce much less competitive. Yet somehow we're going to sell more of it. Makes no sense environmentally or economically. And even moving on from food to manufactured goods, we've been running down our manufacturing base for decades and pushing ourselves more as a service market. And where we do have manufacturing in this country, it's really just factories for companies that are owned by people in other countries. You know, we produce other people's goods. And even where there is the prospect to get ahead of the game on some aspects of manufacture, we're not doing like Boris Johnson talks about Britain leading the world in green technology. Great, fantastic. Could absolutely do that. Only there are three big problems quite evident. First, there is insufficient government investment in this technology. It's not just going to spring up out of the ground. The natural conditions for this industry to take off in the UK are no, are no better than in any other developed economy. And if it could happen here, why not? Germany, France, the United States, Australia, Japan, why not? It's going to need direct input from the government and major investment. That investment, and even impetus, is completely lacking. The second problem is we don't have the skills. 
We have been desperately short of engineers for decades. We need a huge training and recruitment drive. We need the government to fully fund all suitable engineering programmes, get more people into engineering, doesn't matter whether it's at university, college, apprenticeships, whatever route into engineering. None of this tuition fees and student loans crap, fund it properly. Give all engineering students their tuition completely free and pay them a suitable living wage while they learn as well. So then the choice is, oh, should I study sociology where I have to pay tuition fees and I have to try and struggle to get by on my student loan? Or do I go and study engineering where no tuition fees, I'm going to have all my living costs paid for, I'll be given some money to live on as well, it's like having a job but for learning. Make it attractive to people, especially from working class backgrounds, and you will not only build up the native skills necessary to drive British manufacturing for the future, you will improve social mobility as well. But the government aren't doing this. They're not even planning to do this. So we don't have the engineers and we're not going to train them up either. The third problem is in attracting those with the skills from abroad. So it's really simple. If you don't have the homegrown skills, then you need to import them. Even if we did have a plan to build up an army of British engineers, that takes time. So we'd still need to import the skills while we're on with that. Our immigration rules make this really difficult. So just as with scientists, our various immigration policies make it harder to attract the best engineers to come and work here. Really is this simple. We're not going to boost British manufacture to the point where the world is crying out for our products and wants to buy loads and loads of them to the tune of a trillion pounds worth a year unless the government have policies to make it happen. Words aren't going to do it. Yeah, that's all Boris Johnson ever does, isn't it? I have decided that we should sell a trillion pounds worth of goods a year by 2030. Right, British manufacturers, I have spoken, get to work. As if that's going to make it happen. As if British manufacturers are supposed to go, oh, right, yeah, oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll sell more goods to other people. We hadn't thought of doing that. You know, hasn't escaped the attention of the financial press that the Conservatives had exactly this trade aim before. David Cameron set the objective in 2012 didn't go very well. And, and that was when we were lowering trade barriers with our major trading partners. We weren't boosting British manufacturing, but we were at least lowering trade barriers to make it easier to sell. Since Brexit, we've raised huge trade barriers with our major market, and it hasn't come with an equivalent lowered barriers elsewhere. Remember that the trade agreements with the likes of Japan, Australia, New Zealand are providing greater access for their businesses into our market not so much the other way around. Remember that the best that Liz Truss could say of the Japanese trade deal was that we could sell them more cheese. Well, a couple of things. Uh, firstly, that's not actually true because our cheese quotas are just the leftover EU ones. In other words, we didn't even get our own quota. We can only sell what the EU don't want to. Secondly, Japanese people are famously lactose intolerant. So we're a little bit limited in terms of expansion there. Same with Australia and New Zealand, and when it comes to it, the United States eventually. The pattern of all these trade agreements is that we will, in theory, get some lower trade barriers to certain goods, but it's the goods that those markets don't really want to buy from us. You know, no part of the government's Brexit policies are going to help us achieve greater export growth. I mean, you look at, for example, a lot of British businesses that struggle to export into the EU. What did the government advise them to do? It advised them to set up operations in the EU. Uh, if, you're, if you're finding it trouble, troublesome exporting, just build yourself a facility in the EU for your EU side of your business. So the, the government have actively told British producers to set up in the EU. So then they're producing there and selling to the EU market there. Well, that's not our exports then, is it? You know, in fact, we're actually shrinking our export growth. You know, to put it into context, in where, how far off with this trillion pounds? 2019, our last year without either Brexit or COVID buggering our trade up, we exported £689 billion pounds worth of goods. That was our best ever. I guess inflation will eventually make a trillion pounds of such relatively small value that we will get there if we wait long enough, let inflation do the work. But in terms of what a trillion pounds is worth in today's money, how are we going to get there? Uh, in real terms, it's not achievable, is it? A net increase in trade barriers, a net reduction in British production, driven by COVID, sure, but also a lack of workers since we left the single market. You do the maths. It's not happening. You know, and I've said in the past that an aim needs a plan. If you've got an objective, it has to have a plan that's going to make it work. Our government have not explained how they're going to achieve the aim. They say things like, oh, we're going to, we're going to fund um, businesses to go on trade shows and things like that. 
that's not a plan. There's no roadmap. And an aim without a plan is just a wish. So the government wish we could get to a trillion pounds of exports. That's the best they can do, apparently. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.